Hi, I'm Shirley Chisholm, and I'm going to tell you about my life. I was born on November 30th, 1924. I moved to Barbados with my two sisters and my grandmother to get a better life. My parents stayed in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. I was born in, in Brooklyn and... I had a bunch of friends, but then I had to move at the age of five. <coughs> Six or five, year late, five years later, I moved back to Brooklyn, and I went to school. I got moved down grades because I was too, I didn't know too much about American history. But then the teachers realized I was smart, and they moved me up a grade. My parents are Ruby Seal and Charles Christopher St. Hill. My middle name is Anita, and I have two sisters named Odessa and Maria Chisholm. My favorite thing to do as a child is help my grandmother on the farm. And my mom was from... My mom was from Barbados, and my dad was from Guyana. I don't know how to say it. the first black woman to get elected to Congress in 1968. I ran for president, but I didn't win. I had 151 official votes. I graduated from Brooklyn College in 1946, and I got a Bachelor of Arts degree. Then, later, I went back to school, and um, I went to Columbia College, for teachers, and I got a degree, no, master's degree in um, uh, elementary education. I was a director of the Hamilton Madison Child Care Center through <coughs> 1953 through 1959. I was an educational consultant for the New York City's that. Child welfare in 1959 through 1964. I had seven terms in the House of Representatives. I helped, um, I was in the Veterans Affair Committee, then I went to the Education and Educational and Labor Committee. I was the only woman among the founding of the Black Congress Caucus in 1969. I married Conrad Chisholm in 1949. I became a second grade, became a second grade teacher. the founder of the National Organization of Women. I resigned from politics and I became a college teacher. Chalkboard, chalkboard. <coughs> I was nominated to be the U.S. Ambassador to Jamaica, but I was dropped. The New York like as a Democrat member of the New York Assembly. I will, the last Democratic Party president. I was the last. I was once. I, when I ran for president, 
I ran in 1972, and this is one of my campaign posters. <coughs> This is a picture of the Congress building where I work. Oh, I died January 1st, 2015 at age 80. Some of my major accomplishments were becoming the was becoming the first black woman to be in Congress, and I was the first African American to run for president. And I, I was one of the first people to be I was one of the first women to be elected to Congress. I should be admired because I was a model for many Americans and African Americans. I encourage people to dream. I would be a great role model for younger people. I was brave, I was courageous, I was helpful, and I was encouraging. I spoke Spanish to talk to my Hispanic and Mexican supporters. My motto was unbought and unbossed, like you can see on there. I stood up for all Americans and wanted to make a change. A statue was made for me in Brooklyn, my hometown, <coughs> and after I died, I fought by myself. I gave speeches out of the back of my truck. I didn't decide to run for president. My fans asked me, and I said I would do it for them. I was a Democrat, and years later, after I died, Obama gave me, well, honor to me, an award after I died. <coughs> and um, when I uh, ran for president, that election, President Nixon won. The end. <laughs> Uh, hello, I'm Momo Rudolph. I was born June 23rd, 1940. I lived in St. Bethlehem, Tennessee. I was one of 22 children. I was four years old when I diagnosed with polio. Um, I got scarlet fever, whooping coughs, chicken pox, measles, and pneumonia twice. Uh, I was pretty happy as a child, but I felt lonely when my brothers and sisters would go to school. I was checked on every week. I was checked every week by a doctor that only treated black people. I never had to do chores. I just watched my brothers and sisters. I wanted to be like other kids. Um, uh, I always got baby my, my siblings. I was always listening to the radio with my brothers and sisters. Um, my mom was always putting on blankets because so I could sweat my sickness away. Um, a hot summer morning, I wanted to jump out of bed and go play in the yard. Uh, I had a doctor named Dr. Jackson, but I liked Dr. Colin better. I had to wake up on a dark winter night to go to Nashville two times a week. Uh, 
Um, I was put on the relay team in 1959. I went to Tennessee State University. Um, I was a sport icon in track and field. I did the 75, the 100, and the 400 dash relay. I also did nine races and won all of them. I was chosen to be on an Olympic team and to go to Olympic team to go to Washington. In 1994, um, I became an athlete's coach, and I, also in 1994, I became a second grade teacher. On May 19, 1964, I had my second daughter uh, named DJ. Um, I was offered a job to decor I, I was offered a, do a job to decorate to get more money in Indiana. My major accomplishments in 1955 I won a bronze medal in the 100 meter Olympic Games. In 1960 I was the world re record in the 200 meter race. I won three gold medals in the 100 meter, the 200 meter dash, and the 100 meter relay Olympic Games in Rome, Italy. I was the first black American woman to win. Um, I received the Sullivan Award and Associated Press. I received a Babe Dixon Zaris Award. I inducted into the Black Athletes Hall of Fame. I was also inducted into the Women's Sports Foundation Hall of Fame. Uh, reasons why I should be admired is because I was one of the most admired American sprinters, sprinters who became a world record holding medalist. I survived polio my whole life. I my talent of running, and I never gave up on my dreams, even though I got sick a lot. Um, I also became, uh, I also, also because everybody told me that I couldn't walk, but I did it anyways. Um, I found these in a child, a childhood fame American. Um, uh, Roma Rudolph, Google, my mom, my sister, YouTube, and Wikipedia. <laughs> um, extra information is my parents' name is Blanche Rudolph and Ed Rudolph. I met Jackie Rob Robinson, a famous role model. I had two husbands, Robert Eldridge and William Ward. I had four children. My first daughter was named Yolanda Eldridge. My second son was named Dury Eldridge. My second daughter was named uh, DJ Eldridge. And my second son was named Robert Eldridge. I like to play back. And I also... This is St. Bethlehem, Tennessee, and this is New Bethlehem. Uh, okay, I'm done. Detroit to find work. 
after three years, during which came to a contract with the internal combustion engine for the first time. Henry Ford liked school, but he found it hard at times to keep his mind on his work. Henry Ford saw the steamroll engine, and as he grew up, he was very interested in making and working on engines. When he was 25, he married Clara Brandt, and they decided to settle in Dearborn, Michigan. Three years, three years later, he began working at the Edison Illuminating Company in Detroit. In 1893, Ford built and tested his own internal combustion engine. Ford tested his first car, the quadricycle. In 1899, he becomes a partner in the Detroit Automobile Company. In 1901, Ford wins his first automobile race. In 1903, Ford forms the Ford Motor Company with a small group of investors and sold the first Ford Model A. When Henry Ford made the Model T, many orders came in for it. Model T. Ford Model T was one of the mass, first mass production vehicles allowing Ford to achieve his aim of manufacturing the universal car. One day, Henry Ford announced that every worker in the factory would receive twice the wages he had been receiving before. As a result, thousands of people came to Detroit in search of work. Soon, a Ford factory was built in Canada and yet another one in England. Before long, Henry Ford's name and the Model T are familiar to the whole world. Wow. It was a new and different world which Henry had put on wheels. Henry had never given up on his dream of building machines that would make farm work easier. On April 7, 1947, Henry Ford sadly died at age 83. <laughs> Major accomplishments. Henry Ford started the Ford Motor Company. In 1918, he ran for U.S. Senate, but lost. He built an early horseless carriage called the Quadricycle, or Ford Quadricycle. Ford's Model T regarded as the first affordable automobile. Henry Ford revolutionized industry through his moving assembly line. His $5 day wage is considered a defying moment for American workers. He made Henry Ford popularized the five day, 40 hour work week. He made important contributions to the aircraft industry. He established the Ford Foundation to advance human welfare. Ford pioneered an industrial concept that is named Fordism after him. Henry Ford is regarded as one of the most influential people of the 20th century. Henry Ford can inspire many young boys and girls to create something new. Henry Ford never gave up on his dream. He was a very successful businessman. Okay. Assembly line is when there are many workstations that each focus on one part of the whole product. Ford's cars would go through the workstations with a part being added at each station until it was complete. This way the cars were created by mass production, which is when you make a very large amount of product using an assembly line. This technique allowed Ford to make vehicles quickly and cheaply, which meant more people could then afford the cars. As a result, in 1918, half of all cars were used were Model T. These are some of my favorite Henry Ford quotes. If there is any one secret of success, it lies in the ability to get the other person's point of view and see things from that person's angle, as well as from your own. Quality means doing it right when no one is looking. Coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. Those who walk with God always reach their destination. And this is how the Ford logo has evolved over time. In 1903 to 1904, this logo was first used in the Ford Model C. 
1907, they changed it. First used of an oval as a trademark. And then they changed it again in 1928. And it looked like this. Ford script and oval first seen on the Ford Model A. And then in 1965, Ford Oval established as corporate signature, which looks like the one that we have today. But then they, in 2000, they changed it again to like this. Trustmark established as corporate signature. In 2003, they changed it to this, which is the one that we have today. It has never been changed ever since. And here, as you can see, it's how Ford has evolved over time. From the Ford Model T, the Ford F-150 Raptor. 